He offers his hand, and she shakes it. Call again if you like. I wish I had a lump of sugar for your horse. Next time. He's my main indulgence. I wish I'd been here when a good horse went with the job. Yes, but what is your job? You mentioned your chief. Oh, the, the, the resident. He represents the government here. The British government. Delhi. The Viceroy, in fact. Jimpo is not British India. You understand that? Yes, but it's all empire, isn't it? Oh yes, absolutely. But there's about 500 Rajas and Ma Maharajas and Nabobs and so on who run bits of it. Well, nearly half of it, actually, by treaty. And we're here to make sure they don't get up to mischief. Knew you were a kind of policeman. Durance laughs and goes down the steps of the veranda. He hesitates shyly. Miss Crew, would you have dinner with us while you were here? With you and your wife, do you mean? No, at the club. Us. With me. I don't run to a wife, I'm afraid. But do come. We're a reasonably civilized law, and there's usually dancing on Saturdays. Only a gramophone, but lots of fun. Two. On Saturday, then. Oh, splendid. I'll come by. Got a horse, you know. We have a Daimler at the residency. I'll see if I can wangle it. Pick you up at eight? Yes. We don't dress normally, except on dress nights. It's a new club. I'll be ready. Jolly good. He exits and mounts the horse, which snorts. Sound like Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Wankle the dot the Daimler. Flora <laughs> waves and turns aside. She sits at her table and starts to write. Anish is drawing Mrs. Swan. But Jimaper was a was a She's native state. Him. Yes. So we didn't put your father in jail. Jail. Uh well. <laughs> Whatever your father may have done, the resident would have had no authority to imprison an Indian. The Raja of Jumapur has his own justice. Ah, but his highness, the Raja. Oh, I'm not saying we wouldn't have boxed his ears and sent him packing if he forgot which side his bread was buttered, but facts are facts. The Raja put your father in the choky. How long for, by the way? Six months. The there you are. Oh in God. British India, he would have got a year at least. After the war, it may have been different. With independence around the corner, people were queuing up to go to prison. It was the ticket to the top. They do their bit of civil disobedience and hop into the paddy wagon, thoroughly pleased with themselves. Eric, that's my husband, would let them off with a small fine if he thought they were Johnny come ladies, and they'd be furious. That was when Eric had his district. We were right up near Nepal. Yes, the tea tray. You spotted it. In India, we had pictures of coaching inns and fox hunting, and now I've landed up in Shepparton. I've got elephants and prairie wheels cluttered up the window ledge. Cluttering up the window ledges. And the tea tray is Nepalese brass. One could make a comment about human nature, but have a slice of Battenberg instead. Thank you. I got it specially, an artistic sort of cake, I always think. <laughs> what kind of paintings are they, these paintings that are not like your father's? Describe your latest. Like the cake? Delicious. Thank you. No, are they like the cake? Oh, no. They're all like each other, really. I can't describe them. Indescribable, then. Honest testing, testing. The drawing and passes it to her. There. Ah, that's a proper drawing. You could do portraits if you wanted. Yeah, you sound way better. She gives the drawing okay. back to Anish. Thank you. Now, what are we going to tell Eldon about your father? Eldon? E. Cooper Pike. He calls me Eleanor, so I have to call him Eldon so as not to seem toffee-nosed. If he starts calling me Nell, I suppose I'll have to start calling him L. He's waiting for me to die so he can get on with Flora's biography, which he thinks I don't know he's writing. Oh yes, edited by E. Cooper Pike. That means he does the footnotes. Oh yes, I see. Far too much of a good thing, in my opinion, the footnotes. 
to be constantly interrupted by someone telling you things you already know or don't need to know at that moment. There were pages where Flora could hardly get a word in sideways. Mr. Pike teaches Flora crew. It makes us sound like a subject, doesn't it? Like biology. Or in her case, botany. Flora is widely taught in America. I have been written too, even visited on one occasion telephoned by a young woman doing Flora crew. Almost always young women, and from all over, lots from America. Flora has become quite a heroine, which she always was to me. I was only three when Mother died, so it was Flora who... Oh dear, I'm going to need a hanky. Oh, I say. I'm sorry. A hanky. Found it. It makes me so cross that she missed it all. The collected poems, and now the letters, with her names all over the place, and students and professors so interested and so sweet about her poetry. Nobody gave tuppence about her while she was alive except to get her knickers off. How was your tea? Daz arrives at the guest house and props his bicycle against the veranda. Flora, working, barely acknowledges him. It's very nice, Mrs. Swan. It says, the portrait of Flora Crew is reproduced by permission of Mrs. Eleanor Swan. Does that mean you have it? Yes. Here? In your house? Would you like to see it? Very much! I half expected to see it hanging the moment I arrived. That's because you're a painter. I'll bring it out. Yes, I can't get the tea here to taste as it should. I expect it's the water. A reservoir near Staines won't have the makings of a good cup of tea compared to with the waters we got in the hills. It came straight off the Himalayas. She leaves. Flora and Dawes are at work. Think of a woman in a blue dress, sat on a straight-backed chair at a plain table on the veranda of a guest house, writing about the weather. Or think, if you prefer, of bitches, cats, goats, monkeys, at it like. Oh, fiddlesticks. May we stop for a moment? I'm sticking to myself. Of course. Forgive me. You mustn't take responsibility for the climate, too, Mr. Doss. No, I... No, I'm sorry. I'm bad-tempered. Should we have some tea? I wouldn't mind something to eat, too. That's rule. There's a jar of duck pâté, duck pâté in the refrigerator. Oh, that's rule. Shaw and... Yes, ma'am. I will bring the tea <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Bread in, in the icebox. No, don't go. Listen to me. Would you allow me, please? Daz and Nazrul speak in Hindi. Daz orders bread and butter and the duck pate from the fridge. Daw, picture of a duck. What was all that? He will bring yeah, tea and bread and butter and cake. The pate has been taken by robbers. What? Just so, I'm afraid. But the refrigerator... Is padlocked. Mr. Kumaraswamy pointed out to me particularly. Where do you keep the key? Nazrul keeps it, of course. Ah, well. The whole thing is a great mystery. Floor splutters in the back. We both have to laugh really hard. Joins in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But surely, isn't it against his religion? Oh, certainly. I should say so. Not that I'm saying Nazarul stole the pate, but stealing would be against his religion, undoubtedly. I mean stealing, I mean the pork. But I thought you said it was duck. One must read with a small print, Mr. Das. Duck pate in large letters, with pork in small letters. It's a common commercial practice. Yes, I see. We must hope he only got the duck part. That is your true nature speaking, Miss Crew. Though, of course, if they use one pig for every duck, he'll be lucky to have got any duck at all. The truth will never be known, only to God, who is merciful. Yes, which God do you mean? Yours, if you wish. Uh, by all means. Um, now, Mr. Doss, there's such a thing as being too polite. Yours was here first. Oh, but we Hindus can afford to be generous. We have gods to spare, one for every occasion. And Krishna said... Whichever god a man worships, it is I who answers the prayer. I'm not sure whether Krishna was a god or a person. Oh, he was most certainly a god, one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. He he had a love he had a great love affair, you see, with a married lady, Radha. That's what confuses me. Radha was the most beautiful of the herdswomen. She fell passionately in love with Krishna. 
She would often escape from her husband to meet him in secret. It is a favorite subject of the old Rajas, Rajasthani pot painters. Come and sit down, Mr. Doss. I will, but I will start my tree while we wait. Put a monkey in it. Yes, like Hanuman, he is my favorite in the Ramayana, the monkey god. <laughs> Mr. Kumaraswamy showed me the temples. Did you find them interesting? I liked some of the sculptures, the way the women are often smiling to themselves. Yes, that was quite revealing, I thought. About Indian women? No, about Indian sculptors, in breasts like melons and baby-bearing hips. You must thank me, ill favored. No, my wife was slightly built. <laughs> oh. Nazrul <laughs> enters with the tea tray. Thank you, Nazrul, and two kinds of cake. Nazrul replies smilingly and leaves. What's your face today? I think your work was troublesome. Yes. Is it the rhyming that is difficult? No. The meter? No, the emotion won't harmonize. I'm afraid I'm not much good at talking about it. I'm sorry. That's why I don't keep nipping round your side of the easel. If I don't think there's nothing to say, I think that's better. Yes, it is better to wait. My painting has no rasa today. What is rasa? Rasa is juice. Its taste, its essence. A painting must have its rasa, which is not in the painting exactly. Rasa is what you must feel when you see a painting or hear music. It is the emotion which the artist must arouse in you. In poetry, does a poem have rasa? Oh yes! Poetry is a sentence whose soul is rasa. That is a famous dictum of v Vishvan Vishvanata, a great teacher of poetry, 600 years ago. Rasa, yes, my poem has no rasa. Or perhaps it has two rasa, which are in conflict. Oh. There are nine rasa, each one a different colour. I should say mood, like the rings. But each mood has its own colour. White for laughter and fun, red for anger, pale yellow for tranquility. Oh, no. is there one for grey? Grey is for sorrow. Sorrow, I see. Each one has its own name and its own god, too. And some don't get on, is that it? Yes, that is it. Some do and some don't. If you arouse emotions which are in opposition to each other, the rasa will not harmonize, you said. Yes. Your poem is about heat. Yes. But its rasa is perhaps anger? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> The rasa of erotic love is called Sringara. Its god is Vishnu, and its color is Sh Shyama, which is blue-black. Vishvanata, in his book on poetics, tells us, Sringara requires, naturally, a lover and his loved one, who may be a courtesan if she is sincerely enamored, and it is aroused by, for example, the moon, the scent of sandalwood or being in an empty house. Shringara goes harmoniously with all other rasa, and their complementary emotions with the exception of fear, cruelty, disgust, and sloth. See, thank you. Empty house is very good. Mr. Doss, you sounded just like somebody else. Yourself, I expect. I knew you could. The other one reminded me of Dr. Aziz in Forster's novel. Have you read it? I keep wanting to kick him. Oh. <laughs> For not knowing his work. <laughs> then perhaps you didn't finish it. Yes, perhaps. Does he improve? He alters. What is your opinion of a passenger? Was that the delicate question you considered to ask me? <laughs> oh, Mr. Das. Pike enters, dressed for India. He is staying at the best hotel in Jumapur and looks it. He carries a smart shoulder bag. He stares around him in a vaguely disappointed way. Modern street sounds, distinctly Indian, accompany Pike's entrance. Flora is at her table, writing. Dawes is at the easel, painting. Juniper, Saturday, April 5th. Darling Nell, I'm having my portrait painted. I mean, the painter is at it as I write, so if you see a picture of me in my cornflower dress, you'll know I was writing this. Some of the time, anyway. He thinks I'm writing a poem. Posing as a poet, you see, just as the enemy once said of me in his rough and rag. The enemy was J.C. Squire, 1884 through 1958, poet, critic, literary editor of the New Statesman and editor of the London Mercury, an anonymous editorial in the London Mercury, April 1920, complained about an outbreak of versifying flappers who should stop posing as poets and confine themselves to posing as railway stations. 
The magazine was sued by the poets Elizabeth Paddington, 1901 through 1980, and Meredith, Meredith Houston, 1899 through 1929, both cases being settled out of court. F.C. poured a pint of beer over Squire's head in the Fitzroy Tavern in January 1921. Dilip enters with a bottle of- oh, Dr. Pike! Eldon, please. Will you have a cola, Eldon? Oh, thanks. What kind of- His suspicion has been aroused. Thumbs up, cola? You know, I think maybe I won't. I got two, really. I drank mine while I was talking to the shopkeeper. It is as I thought. The Dak bungalow wasn't exactly here in the courtyard. Of course, the flats did not exist. I'm afraid nothing you can see goes back to before the war. No, that's a shame. Except the tree, perhaps. Oh yes, the tree. That's right, she mentions, mentions a tree. The old man remembers the bungalow very well. It was destroyed, a casualty of partition. Taken apart? Burned, in the riots. There were many people killed here in 47. Partition. Oh yes, terrible. Would this be the same tree? Probably. It looks old. Would you take my picture? On the spot. Yes, certainly. This is so good. This is so good of you, Dillop. No, no. It is a red letter day for the Fellowship of Teachers of English Literature. Pike takes a camera from his bag and gives it to Dillop. It's all focusing. Just press the... I could take out an ad in the newspaper. Someone may remember an artist. Go back a bit. Show more of the... No, the 35 is fine. Do you remember if I take it off auto? Do you mind if I take it off auto? Stop it down for the background. F8. Oh, sure. Yes, why not? Put an advert in the paper. Ready? Thank you. I'll take one of you. All right. On 50. More of Dillip. After all, 56 years, he could still be alive. He'd only have to be... 90. Yes, pr probably not. Is this alright? The other thing is, what do I do? Just point it. The thing is, Dillip, here we go. Thank you. The other thing is, there was a watercolor, a lost portrait, a nude. That's the way it reads to me. Don't you think so? Oh yes, I think that's the way it reads to you, Eldon. But she was a poet, and you're a biographer. A lost portrait would be just the ticket. How about offering a reward? A reward? For information leading to, if the local paper did a story about it, I bet that would get results. Undoubtedly. Your hotel would be stormed by a mob waving authentic watercolor portraits of English ladies in every stage of undress. I should get a shot from above, with the tree. Could one get on the roof, do you think? I'm sure. Let me go and see. Dilla, please. <laughs> Darling, you mustn't expect me to be intelligence from abroad. You obviously know much more about the salt march, march than I do. Gandhi's march to the sea to protest the salt tax began at Am Ahmedabad on March 12th. He reached the sea on, this, on the day this letter was written. Nobody has mentioned it to me. If I remember, I'll ask at the club tonight. I had a visit from a clean young Englishman who asked me to dinner. It was a bit of an afterthought, really. I think I made a gaffe by not announcing myself to the resident, and the young man, he was on a horse, was sent to look me over. I think he ticked me off, but he was so nice it was hard to tell. I have a feeling that I'm just going to stop in a minute. My artist is frowning at me, and then canvas as if one of us is misbehaving. He is charming and eager and reminds me of Charlie Chaplin, not the idiotic one in the films, the real one who was at the tree's launch party. Thank you for It was Sir points. Herbert Burbome Tree, who soon after the crew family arrived in London from Derbyshire, gave F.C. her first employment, fleetingly as a cockney bystander, in the original production of Pygmalion, and after objection from Mrs. Patrick Campbell, more permanently, in the office. It was this connection which brought F.C. into the orbit of Trees' daughter, Trees' daughter, Iris, and her friend, Nancy Cunard, and thence to the Sitwells, and arguably to the writing of poetry. My poem, the one I'm not writing, is about sitting still and being hot. It got defeated by its subject matter, and I should be gone to the hills. I'm only waiting for my artist to, artist to finish. The hot weather, they tell me, is about to start, but I can't imagine anything being hotter than this, and will be followed by the wet season, Though I already feel as though I'm sitting in a puddle, I don't think this is what Dr. Guppy meant by a warm climate. Dr. Alfred Guppy had been the crew family doctor since the move from Derbyshire to London in 1913. His notes on FC's illness with reference to pulmonary congestion are first dated 1926. Oh, shut up! It is as though she <laughs> oh my turned God, on thank Pike, God. simultaneously turned on Pike. losing his temper, is shouting in Hindi. Toss his back! Toss his back! <laughs> Get off! Get off! <laughs> but they are shouting, or they are both shouting at a couple of unseen pie dogs 
who have been heard yapping and barking and are now fighting under the veranda. In the middle of this, Dillip calls out for Eldon. The fuss resolves itself. Pike follows Dillip off. The dogs go whining into oblivion. Oh, fiddlesticks! Sorry, is it my fault? No, how can it be? Is that so silly? No, forgive me! Oh dear, Miss Crew! Yesterday I felt a communion, and today... Oh, it is my fault! Yesterday I was writing a poem, and today I've been writing a letter to my sister. What it is? A letter? I'm not the same sitter. How thoughtless of me. Yes, yes. Are you angry? I don't know. Can we stop now? I would like a cigarette. Would you care for a cigarette? They are gold flake. No, but I'd like you to smoke. Thank you. You are writing to your sister. She is in England, of course. Yes, in London. Her name is Eleanor. She is much younger than me. And also beautiful, like you? Routine gallantry is disappointing from you. Oh, it was not? Then thank you. Where does your sister live? What's her address? Oh, oh okay. That's almost, that's almost the first thing you asked me. Would it mean anything to you? Daz is loosening up again, regaining his normal good nature. Oh, I have the whole of London spread out in my imagination. Challenge me, and you will see. Alright. She lives in Holborn. Oh? Which part of London is that? Well, it's... oh dear. Between the Grey's Inn Road and... Holborn! Yes, Holborn. But of course I know Holborn. Charles Dickens lived in Doughty Street. Yes, I lives in Doughty Street. But Miss Crewe, Oliver Twist was written in that very street. Well, that's where Eleanor lives, over her work. She's the assistant to an editor of a weekly, The Flag. The Flag? <laughs> you surely have never read that too. No, but I have met the editor of The Flag. Yes, of course you have. That's how I came to be here. Mr. Chamberlain gave me letters of introduction. His lecture in Jumapur caused the Theosophical Society to be suspended for one year. Sorry, but it's not for me to apologize for the Raj. Oh, it was not the Raj, but the Raja. His Highness was not a socialist. Do you agree with Mr. Chamberlain's theory of empire? I was not persuaded. Of course, I am not an economist. That is deeded, Mr. Chamberlain. It is not my opinion that England's imperial empire is simply to buy time against revolution at home. Political opinions are often and perhaps entirely a function of temper temperament, Mr. Doss. Eleanor and Mr. Chamberlain are well suited. Your sister shares Mr. Chamberlain's opinions? Naturally. Being his assistant, you mean? His mistress. Oh. You should have been a barrister, Mr. Doss. I am justly rebuked. It was not a rebuke, and an unintended slight, perhaps. I am very sorry about your sister. It must be a great sadness for you. I am very happy for her. But she will never be married now, unless Mr. Chamberlain marries her. He's already married, otherwise he might. Oh my goodness, how different things are. Here, you see, your sister would have been cast out for bringing shame on her father's house. <laughs> Yes, perhaps we are not so enlightened as you. Yes, perhaps. Well, you have had your cigarette. Are we going to continue? No, not today. I'll go back to my poem. There is no need. <laughs> well, I'll copy out my poem for my sister. I'll do that for safekeeping, you see. I'm sending her the drawing you did of me at the lecture. I have an appointment I had forgotten. Oh. Actually, you mustn't feel obliged. He begins gathering together his paraphernalia, apparently in a hurry now. What have I done? Done? What should you have done? Stop it, please. Stop being Indian. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at the portrait, Miss Crew. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, I did look. Yes. I had a peep. Why not? You wanted me to. Yes, why not? You looked at the painting, and you decided to spend the time writing letters. Why not? Sorry! You still have said nothing about the painting. I know. I cannot continue today. I understand. Will we try again tomorrow? Tomorrow is Sunday. The next day. Perhaps I cannot continue at all. <laughs> oh, 
and all because I said nothing. Are you at the mercy of every breeze that blows? Are you an artist at all? Perhaps not. A mere sketcher. A hack painter who should be working in the bazaar. He snatches up the pencil sketch from under Flora's hand. Stop it! Daz tears the paper in half. Or in chalks on the gat. I'm ashamed of you! Excuse me, please. I wish to leave. I will take the canvas. You will- It becomes a physical tussle. <laughs> a struggle. She begins to grasp. Sophia's <laughs> hyperventilating right now. This book is so intense. Sorry, I was trying to guess. <laughs> <laughs> you need not see it again. We will not take anything. We will continue. I do not want to continue, Miss Crew. Please let go. I won't let you give up. Let go, damn you. Someone will see us. And stop crying. You're not a baby. <laughs> I will cry if I wish. <laughs> cry then. But you will finish what you started. How else will you ever... And suddenly, Flora is helpless, gasping for breath. Oh, oh, Miss Crew, oh my god, let me help you, I'm sorry, please, here, <laughs> sit down. Me. She has had an attack of breathlessness. He helps her to a chair. Flora speaks with difficulty. Stop it! I'm alright! There. There. there! What happened? I'm not allowed to wrestle with people. It's a considerable nuisance. My lungs are bad, you see. Let me move the cushion. I'm alright. I'm back now. Panic over. I'm here for my health, you see. Well, not here. I'll stay longer in the hills. Yes, that will be better. You must go high. Yes, in a day or two. What is the matter with you? I'm oh, sloshing about inside. Can't breathe underwater. I'm sorry if I frighten you. You did frighten me. I'm soaking. You must change your clothes. Yes, I'll go in now. I've got a shiver. Pull me up. Thank you. Ugh, I feel like I need to be rubbed down like a horse. Perhaps some tea. <laughs> I'll go to the kitchen and tell... Yes, would you? I'll have a shower and get into my Wendy house. Your... My big towel is on the kitchen veranda. Would you ask Nose Rule to put it in the bedroom? Does runs towards the kitchen veranda, shouting for Naz Rule. Come on, Max, Laura shout Naz Rule. Into the interior, into I, I want to do a Naz Rule voice as she yeah. goes, dropping the blue dress on the floor and enters Shut the bathroom in her underwear. <laughs> Does oh returns, my. hurrying with the towel. He enters the interior, cautiously calling Miss Crew. He enters the bedroom and finds it empty. From the bathroom, there is the sound of water pipes thumping, but no sound of water. Oh, damn. Come on now. <laughs> Miss Crew! The thumping and the pipes continues. <laughs> Des approaches the bathroom door. Miss Crew, I'm sorry. There's no... Water! That wasn't British, I'm sorry. noise continues. Miss Crew, I'm sorry. The electricity. The electric pump. Lie down. Oh! Oh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> Relieved of the towel, Daz is frozen with horror. So she's I'm that sorry, ugly. Mr. Das, but really, I feel too peculiar to mind at the moment. Please forgive me. No, please, there's water in the jug on the washstand. Do be quick. It's the electricity for the pump. Is there any water? Yes, it's full. Here. Thank you. Now you do it. Over my head and my back, please. Oh, Hedden. Oh, thank you. I'm terribly sorry about this. Oh, that's good. Tip the last bit on the towel. Why on the towel? She wipes her face with the wet corner of the towel. I was weak as a kitten. I'm afraid that's all. Thank you. Could you do the net for me? I'll be all right now. Yes, of course. Tadas, I think there's soda water in the refrigerator. Would you... Oh, yes, but is it locked? I cannot find Nez Rule. Oh, I'm already hot again, and no electricity for the fan. Too late for modesty. Anyway, I'm your model. I will fetch soda water from the shop. That was the thing I was going to ask you. When? The delicate question, whether you would prefer to paint me nude. Oh. I preferred it. I had more, what do you call it? Rosa. Yes, Rosa. 
Dawes leaves the bedroom and goes along the veranda towards the servants' quarters and disappears around the corner. Mrs. Swan returns with Dawes' portrait of Flora. The canvas is inside a cardboard tube. This is how it came back from the publishers. I tuck things away. You hold her and I'll pull the tube. Thank you. Well, there she is. Oh. Yes, a bit much, isn't it? Oh, it's so vibrant. Vibrant. Yes. Oh, you're not going to blub, are you? Weeping. I'm sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> borrow my... Borrow my... <laughs> he takes her, her, her handkerchief. <laughs> Please excuse me. It just goes to show you need an eye. And your father, after all, was, like you, an Indian painter. I'm sorry, I... you know. No, I should not have been disparaging. Let me see. Yes, book jackets and biscuit tins are all very funny. well, but... Obviously, there's something that stays behind in the painting, after all. Yes, even unfinished. Unfinished? It wasn't clear from the book the way they cropped the painting. You see... Where my father has only indicated the tree and the monkey, he would have gone back to complete the background only when he considered the figure finished. Believe me, I wondered why he hadn't signed it. Now I know. My father abandoned this portrait. Why? He began another one. How would you know, Mr. Daz? Because I have it. He opens his briefcase and withdraws the watercolor, which is hardly larger than the page of a book. Protected by stiff boards, he shows her the painting, which is described in the text. Oh, heavens. Oh, yes, of course. How like Flora. More than a good likeness, Mrs. Swan. No, I mean, how like Flora. She continues to look at the painting, and as rule returns to the Dak bungalow with shopping, the worse for wear, disappearing towards the kitchen area, where Dawes starts shouting at him, and as Rule is heard protesting, Dawes returns to a view with a bottle of soda water. He speaks first from outside the bedroom. Nazrul has returned, most fortunately. I was able to unlock the refrigerator. I have soda water. Thank you, Mr. Dawes. Dawes enters the bedroom. Should I pour the water for you? Nazrul was delayed at the shops by a riot, he says. The police charged the mob with, Lass with Lathis. He could e have easily been killed, but by heroism and inspired by his loyalty to the me Mem Sahib, he managed to return only an hour late with all the food you gave him money for, except two chickens which were torn from his grasp. Oh dear, you thanked him, I hope. I struck him, of course. You should find him for the chickens. <laughs> Flora lifts the net sufficiently to take the glass from Dawes, who then steps back rather further than necessary. Oh, that's nice. It's still cold. Perhaps there really was a riot. Oh yes, very probably. I have sent Nazrul to fetch the doby. You must have fresh linen for the bed. Nazrul will bring water, but you must not drink it. Thank you. The punkah begins to flap quite slowly, a regular beat. I'm sh oh, sorry. That's I'm funny. sure the electricity will return soon, and the fan will be working. What's that? Oh, the punker. I have found the boy to be Punkawala. Yes, it makes a draught. Thank you. A little boy. Don't worry about him. I've told him the, mens the Memsahib is sick. The Memsahib is sick. Memsahib? Oh, dear. Yes, you are the Memsahib. Are you... Are you all right now, Miss Crew? Oh yes, I'm only shamming now. May I return later to make certain? Are you leaving now? Yes, I've made you late. No, not at all. There is no one waiting for me, but the servant will return, and we Indians are frightful gossips, you see. Oh. It is for self, not me. I don't believe you, Mr. Doss. Not entirely. To tell you the truth, this is the first time I have been alone in a room with an Englishwoman. Oh, well, you suddenly started at the deep end. We need not refer to it again. It was a calamity. A calamity? That's not spoken like an artist. Then perhaps I am not an artist, as you said. 
not. All I did was hold my tongue and you had a tantrum. What would you have done in the rough and tumble of literary life in London? I expect you would have hanged yourself by now. <laughs> when Nymph and Her Horizons came out, one of the reviewers called it Nymph and Hermania, as if my poems, which I had found so hard to write, were a kind of dalliance, no more than that. I met my critic somewhere a few months later and poured his drink over his head and went home and wrote a poem. That was all right, but he'd taken weeks away from me, and I mind that now. Oh, you're not dying, are you? <laughs> I expect so, but I intend to take years and years about it. You'll be dead too one day, so let me be a le lesson to you. Learn to take no notice. I said nothing about your painting, if you want to know, because I thought you'd be an Indian artist. An Indian artist? Yes, you are an Indian artist, aren't you? Stick up for yourself. Why do you like everything English? I do not like everything English. Yes, you do. You're enthralled. Chelsea, Bloomsbury, Oliver Twist, Goldflake Cigarettes, Windsor and Newton, even painting in oils. That's not Indian. You tried to paint me from my point of view instead of yours. What you think is my point of view. You deserve the bloody empire. May I sit down, please? Yes, do. Fla is herself again. I will move the chair near the door. You can move the chair onto the veranda if you like, so the servants won't. I would like to smoke. That is what I meant. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. In that case, can you see me through the net from over there? Barely. Is that a no or a yes? Oof, that's better. That's what I love about my little house. You can see out better than you can see in. But you are looking at such a house. The Bloody Empire finished off Indian painting. Excuse me. No, that's better. Perhaps your sister is right. And Mr. Chamberlain, perhaps we should have been robbed. I mean, perhaps we have been robbed. Yes. When the books are balanced, the women here wear cerise made in Lancashire. The cotton is Indian, but we cannot compete in the weaving. Mr. Chamberlain explained it to us all in simple Marxist language. Actually, he caused some offense. He didn't realize we had Marxists of our own, many of them in the Jumapur Theosophical Society. Kumaswari. No, not Mr. Kumaswari. His criticism is that you haven't exploited India enough. Where are the cotton mills, the steel mills? No investment, no planning. The empire has failed us. That is Mr. Kumaraswamy. Well, the empire will one day be gone like the Mughal Empire before it, and only their monuments will remain. Their visions of Shah Jahan, of Sir Edwin Lutyens. On my mighty works, ye mighty in despair. Oh yes, finally, like the empire of Ozymandias, entirely forgotten except in a poem by an English poet. You see how privileged we are, Miss Crew. Only in art can empires cheat oblivion, because only the artist can say, Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Thank you thinking English was better be- I just didn't like you thinking English was better because it was English. Can you paint me without thinking of Rossetti and Malaise? Especially without thinking of Holman Hunt. Did you consider my question? When you stood with the pitcher of water, you were an Almatad- Tadema. Alma Tadema. Well I, well, I don't want to be painted like that either. I don't understand why you are angry with me. You were painting me as a gift, to please me. Yes, yes, it was a gift for you. You don't start learning to take. You'll never be short of us. Who, whom, nothing else matters. Mr. Chamberlain is bosh. Mr. Kumaraswamy is bosh. It's your country and we've got it. Everything else is bosh. When I was Modi's model, I might as well have been a table. When he was done, he got rid of me. There is no question who whom. You never change his color on a map, but please light your gold flake. Pause. Daz lights his cigarette with a match. I like the pre-Raphaelites because they tell stories. That is my tradition, too. I am Rajasthani. Our art is narrative art, stories from the legends and romances. The English painters had the Bible and Shakespeare, King Arthur. We had the Bhagavata, Purana, and the Rasi... Rasik Priya, which was written exactly when Shakespeare had his first play. And long before Chaucer, we had the Shara Pancha Sika from Kesh Kashmir, which is Rip poems Kashmir. of love written by the poet of the cult on his way to his execution for falling in love with the king's daughter, and the king liked the poem so very much he pardoned the poem the poet and allowed the lovers to marry. Oh. But the favorite book of the Rajput painters was the Gita Govinda, which tells the story of Krishna and Radha. 
the most beautiful of the headswomen. The, the ceiling fan starts working. The electricity is on. You will be a little cooler now. Yes, I might have a sleep. That would be good. Mr. Durrance has invited me to dinner at the club. Will you be well enough? I am well now. That is good. Goodbye, then. Were Krishna and Radha punished in the story? What for? I should have come here years ago. The punker boy can stop now. Will you give him a rupee? I'll return it tomorrow. I will give him an honor. A rupee would upset the market. Dawes leaves. Fleur remains in the bed.